Hey folks, I just got a quick and interesting video for you guys today. So a little while ago, I set myself a challenge to see what I could create in Blender in terms of the basic fundamental shapes just using a single vertex and modifiers. So what you see in front of you now is basically the result of that. Uh, so instead of you know using Shift A uh, to create these basic shapes, I just started with a single vertex and a whole heap of modifiers and recreated all of the base sort of building blocks in Blender. Uh, so to show you, you know, an example that if we select all of these objects in the scene and turn off the viewport visibility for the modifiers, you can see we just have six vertices in front of us, one for each object, and then just a stack of modifiers applied to each one to create these fundamental shapes. Now I think this is quite interesting and cool because it really shows off the power of Blender's built-in modifiers. And it's an interesting way of creating non-destructive geometry as well. So all of this can be changed really easily by just changing the values in the modifier stack. All right, so the first shape we're gonna make is the plane. Now the plane is interesting because it's sort of a good base building block for some of the other shapes we'll be making as well. Uh, so if we can make the plane, we're sort of almost halfway there for the rest of them. So the first thing we're gonna do is add in a single vertex. Now I'm gonna be using the ND add-on to do this. Uh, if you don't have the ND add-on installed, it's a free non-destructive toolkit we built for Blender. There's a description down below. You can download it from Gumroad or Blender Market, whatever you enjoy. So we'll start by adding a single vertex. And the very first thing we're going to do is jump back into object mode because we're just using modifiers. So we don't have to be in edit mode for the rest of this at all. So with that single vertex selected, the very first modifier we're going to add is a displace modifier. So the displace modifier is, I guess, traditionally uh, designed to be used with images or displacement maps to sort of deform geometry that it's applied to. However, we're not going to worry about the image aspect of it and just simply change the direction from normal, uh, in this case, to the x-axis. Now you can see that's sort of shot up all the way um, along the x-axis up here. Uh, it's not quite what we want, so I'm going to set the mid-level down to zero, and then I'm going to set the strength uh, actually, you know what, let's leave it at once. That's basically sort of uh, one meter in Blender's world space. All right, so that's what we want to do for starters is move uh, the, the vertex from the center one meter along the X axis. Uh, the next thing we want to do is move it from here up um, along the Y axis to sort of the, the top right uh, corner. So what we're going to do is take the displace modifier and just duplicate it and then change the direction from X to Y all right, so with that vertex in place, the next thing we want to do is extrude it down to the bottom right-hand corner. Now, the easiest way to do that is actually using the screw modifier. So if you were to add this as is, you would get sort of this circular shape. Uh, but we're going to do a little bit of hacking um, to get it to work in our favor as an extrusion modifier. So what we're going to do is take this angle value from 360 degrees and bring it all the way down to zero. Now it looks like everything's disappeared and that's fine. The next thing we want to do is take this screw length here and just start moving it around. And as you can see, um, that's extruding uh, the vertex out from its current position. Now it's not on the right axis, it's on Z at the moment, so we want to change this over to the Y axis. And then the total screw length here, we're going to go negative uh, 2,000 millimeters just to go from the, the top right to the bottom right corner. And that's to create the very first edge of our plane. Now we're almost there. We just need to do one more thing to create the, uh, the full shape of the plane. And that's just basically to take the screw modifier, duplicate it, and then set the axis to X. And there you go. There's a plane. Now... This, if we turn on wireframe mode, you'll see there's some pretty heavy subdividing going on here. So we can fix that up by just changing the steps uh, in the viewport and the render down to one uh, for both of the screw modifiers. And that'll give us just sort of four nice edges to work with. And that is sort of the base building block for some of the other shapes now. And that's exactly how you would make a plane non-destructively procedurally using just modifiers in Blender and a single vertex. So the next shape uh, we're gonna do is a pretty logical uh, evolution of this one, and that's the cube. So I'm gonna to grab this, duplicate it, move it along the Y axis just to the side here. And then the next thing we're gonna to add to this is a simple solidify modifier. I'm gonna set the offset to one, set this to even thickness, and then set this to 2000 millimeters. And there you go. Honestly, there's nothing more to say about that one. It's pretty simple once you've got the plane in place. 
Okay, so the next shape we're gonna make is the sphere. Now, again, we're gonna take this cube as the base building block for that. I'm gonna duplicate that and just move it along the Y axis a little bit as well. Now, believe it or not, we can actually create a sphere uh, from this cube quite easily, just simply using the bevel modifier. So with the bevel modifier in place, I'm gonna change the width type to percent and just change this to 50%, which will give us this diamond looking object here. Now, that's only with a single segment, but as we begin to increase the segment count here, you can see we begin to start forming a sphere. Now, believe it or not, it's quite cool, but this sphere is actually perfectly spherical, and it, it sort of fits within the same bounding box as the original cube. Now, if we turn off wireframe mode, you'll see that you know we have these weird sort of hard edges uh, you know, come in from the center outwards, and that's just honestly because of the bevel modifier collapsing in on the edges um, and having leaving some overlapping geometry there. So the easiest way to clean that up is to simply at the end of this modifier stack, chuck on a weld modifier and that'll clean that right up and give you just a nice looking sphere at the end. So the next shape we're gonna make is the cylinder. Now I kind of just want a single vertex. I'm just gonna grab this plane, uh, shift D to duplicate that, move that along the Y axis and then just get rid of all the modifiers. So we just have our single vertex left. Now, the first thing I want to do is grab the screw modifier. Again, I'll change the angle to zero, and we want to move along the x-axis and probably go out for uh, maybe, let's go, a thousand mils. So we end up with that, just a single edge going from the origin point out along the x-axis for a thousand millimeters. Now, the next step we're going to do is to grab another screw modifier. Um, as you can already see, we have basically got the uh, the building blocks of the cylinder. The only thing is we have you know, quite a lot of edges going on and here. it looks kind of like a spider's web. So the first thing I wanna do is change the steps viewport for the very first screw modify down to one, uh, which does a lot of cleanup. And then in terms of defining how many segments your cylinder has, that just comes down to these step size down here. So if we have 16, we have 16 uh, segments around the perimeter. Um, but if we change this to say three, for instance, we can actually you know, create a triangle change it to four, you got a, a plane again, um, six, you got a hexagon, um, octagon, and so forth. So let's just go up to, let's say, I don't know, 16. Cool, so one little bit of cleanup we wanna do with this as well is to actually turn on merge mode uh, for the uh, top and the bottom screw modifier. So let's change this from 10 mils to 0.1, and for the second one, same thing, 10 mils to 0.1. That'll just make sure that you know we don't have any overlapping vertices at the end, and that'll um, serve a purpose in a second when we do a little bit of additional cleanup and solidification. So with the two screw modifiers in place, the next thing I want to do is actually chuck on a decimate modifier, and we want to set this to planar mode, and let's go from an angle limit of five degrees down to one degree, and that'll just get rid of any additional edges spawning from the center and sort of reaching out towards the perimeter of our cylinder. So after the decimate modifier is in place, the next thing we wanna do is add a solidify. Now with the solidify, we can basically just change the thickness here and determine how tall our cylinder is. Now I think the cylinder is pretty cool because unlike the, the vanilla cylinder you can add in Blender, you can actually change the segment size of this at any point. Um, and to do that, you just open up the second screw modifier here and just change the segment count. So if you want eight segments, you know, done. It's easy as that. Awesome. So the next shape on the list is the cone. And the cone is just using the cylinder as a base building block. So we're going to duplicate this guy, move it along the Y axis again. And for this one, I'm going to set the segment count to something a little bit higher. Let's go back to 16. So now with that in place, the next step we're gonna do is to actually chuck on a, where is it gone? The simple deform. Now this thing looks a bit weird at first and what we wanna do is change this from twist mode to taper mode and then set the axis to Z. So by default sort of flaring outwards like this, but what we wanna do is grab this factor and bring it all the way down and go down to a value of negative one which just means that basically all the vertices at the top um, side here, of the perimeter sort of meet um, the middle here. Cool, with that in place, um, one thing you'll notice if we turn off wireframes is we get a lot of these weird lines coming down and that's mostly just because we have basically in this case 16 vertices that have met at the center but none of them are joined together. So kind of like the sphere, if we just chuck on a weld modifier at the end, that helps to clean up that quite a bit. 
Um, and then we have a nice looking cone. All right, so the very last shape we're making today is the torus. So we can take this cone as a building block for that as well. So I'm gonna duplicate this, move that along the Y axis. And I wanna just get rid of some of the modifiers here towards the top of the stack. So we'll get rid of weld, uh, simple to form and solidify, and we'll be left with the two screw modifiers and the decimate. Now we wanna flip this uh, over um, probably on the, the Y axis in this case. Yep, that looks good. So this is gonna be sort of the uh, the profile for the the torus. However, uh, I don't think we want it quite that big. So I'm going to change this screw length here from 1000 mils to let's say 500. Awesome. So the next thing we want to do is actually grab the shape and displace it a bit along the X axis. So as we've learned, we can use the displace modifier. Let's set this to X, set the mid level to zero. And I think one's a little bit too low. Let's go 1.5 just to move it out a little bit further. Awesome. So with that displaced, the last thing we want to do is just sort of revolve it around its own origin point. So again, we can use a screw modifier. And as you can see, we already have a sort of base torus in place. Now, I think the resolution of this is a little bit too low for my liking. So I'm going to change this from 16 to 32 just to give us a smoother looking result. Now, one thing you'll notice is the shading on this looks a little bit odd, and that's just because if we have a look at the face orientation, yep, as I suspected, it is flipped. So easiest way to fix that is if we select that, um, and on this last uh, screw modifier, just flip the normals, and that'll get us our shading back in order. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up for today. So these are just some of the base uh, sort of generic shapes we can make using a single vertex and a whole stack of modifiers in Blender.